It's time for an update on the indoor garden. Today we're going to do an update on the plug planter, see how those seedlings are doing, and we're going to be potting up succulents. My favorite succulent, and you don't want to miss it. It has been 19 days since I planted this plug planter, and you'll recall I planted peppers, Egyptian spinach, bush cucumber, bush zucchini, okra, and Thai pepper. So you can barely see the peppers in here because peppers take a lot longer to germinate. And if you're still seeding in trays, just bear in mind that different plants take different times of germination. Now, the beauty of this little planter is there's holes in the bottom and I can just push the little plug right out and put it in another pot because I don't know where all of these plants are going to go yet, I am going to plant them in these plant-based cups that I had in my cabinet. I drilled a couple of holes in the bottom. I can do one of two things, just leave this cell empty, or I could put soil back in it and put another seed. But because it is the end of May, and because I will be traveling this summer, I am thinking I am gonna hold back the rains and not plant any more seeds this season. One of my fans pointed out to me, they make these tarps for indoor gardening. And I have ordered one, but in the meantime, I thought, well, it's pretty simple. You just have a square and you fold up the corners. And so I'm making one out of used piece of white paper so that we can keep our mess our dirt from falling on the floor. So we're gonna work right in here. Okay, Okay, we're all set up and ready to go. I am just using an all-purpose potting soil and today I'm going to use Ivy Organics 6 Macro Plus All-Purpose Fertilizer. Contains beneficial microbes and mycorrhizae. This is from Charles at Ivy Organic Channel. I like to get down to the bottom because I have a feeling, you know, there's different size granules and I have a feeling that sometimes these fertilizers settle. That should be enough to get us started. I'm just gonna mix this up, get our pots ready and then we will plug in our plugs. I'm just gonna put a little bit in each one. I have one of these things. Sometimes they give these to you at the nursery when you buy plants. I'm working at the capacity of my island cart here. I tell you, this has really come in handy. What do you know? If I was going to take them all off, I would push this down and it presses this form into this form, which has spikes, and it pushes all of the plugs out. That's not what I want to do right now. I just want to take out the larger plants. So you can see that there's water in the tray. One got so long I had a bit of a casualty. But look at that just popped right out. Ta -da. What could be easier? And then we'll top all these off with more soil. Now I, I don't know if you've got a finger small enough. My little finger is perfect size to just loosen that and push it up an inch. might have to use a chopstick or something. These squash are so long now that they're, it's really hazardous. <laughs> Very easy to break the stem. 
so I had to get them out of here today. They really shot up when I turned the grow light on a few days ago. Just poke a finger size hole right in the soil. These squash are not going to be happy long in these cups. I can tell you that right now. I'm sort of a messy gardener. I mean, I'm not sort of a messy gardener. I, I've always been a very messy gardener. Now that I'm an indoor gardener <laughs> as well, I have to be a little bit more careful. Let's see if these eight fit only six. One of the things you're definitely going to want to get is one of these little, little watering cans. They're awesome. Ah, what the heck is that? I mean, it looks like a worm, but it's not a worm. It's some kind of larva. This was in the potting mixture. Yeah, I see, I, th yes, I'm going to get them all in here. I will not be deterred. Okay, here we go. Let's give these a little water. Okay, there's our first eight right there. This is something I've noticed with indoor gardening is gnats. And I have ordered some insect sticky traps and I will be using those. Okay, there are only three more cups that I can come up with. And so I am going to plant up three more of these plants. This is probably going to be a situation where one of them gets sacrificed. I don't have to decide right at this moment. Put that in there. So I have one more. I'd like to keep the okra together. This is okra, okra. Okay, I am going to take this one. In full disclosure, I have spilled a little bit of dirt on the floor. I don't want you to think I'm completely neat. If you're someone who feels like you have a black thumb and you could never grow anything, but you'd like to, succulents are the way to go because they're so forgiving. The only way to kill a succulent is really by giving it, starving it of all light and water or watering it too much. They don't get pest problems. They don't cause you any trouble. They're just beautiful to look at. Now, when I first moved to the Palisades, I saw this house on the corner that had the most amazing cactus and succulent garden. Unbelievable. And I saw this plant. This is a Calancho tomentosa, or it's called Panda Ears, Donkey Ears, or pussy ears, I think. <laughs> it's got these different names, but the leaves are very fuzzy and they have sort of a reddish brown, almost looks like stitching. I just think they're gorgeous. And you know how I feel about red. And I just thought this is the succulent for the late bloomer garden. And I searched until I found it. And I was growing it the entire time by my front porch, on my front porch, uh, at the Late Bloomer Garden 1.0. And of course, when I left, I brought along five clippings. These clippings have been in this jar of water, not, <laughs> not the same water, but <laughs> this jar for two and a half months. And I have 
got to get them potted up. It's just unfair. I searched long and hard on Amazon for an appropriate pot to put them in. I wanted something that was sort of greenish white and maybe clay or... This is what I found. These are off-white and they have their own little saucer. And today I'm going to pot up these five into these five pots. <laughs> And I'm going to be using Evie Stone's Organics Cactus and Succulent Putting Mix. I use this quite a bit in the Late Bloomer Garden, and I picked up some for this particular project. A cactus or succulent doesn't want the heavier potting soil. They like a sandier soil with really good drainage because, like I said, they don't like to be sitting. They don't like to have their roots sitting in water. In fact, if you have a pure cactus, that's a desert plant. And if suddenly you get a week of rain, that cactus could be in danger of dying. So if something like that is predicted, pull those cactus plants under some shelter and not let them just get soaked day after day because it could really kill them. I just bought this really adorable little indoor gardening kit on Amazon, of course. And it comes with tools. And you know, I've talked about this many times. I like to put a netting over the hole in the bottom of a pot. And these are pre-cut. These are awesome. Look, so little circles of plastic mesh, and you just put one in the bottom of every pot. They have square ones and round ones. In this case, we're going to use the round ones. Let me just check the square ones. This particular pot is not perfectly flat. So the square ones actually might... You know what? The square ones are more bendable. I'm going to use the square ones. It's just a straight mesh. I am going to be using this succulent and cactus mix straight out of the bag. Now I'm going to kind of make up well in the middle. And as you can see, this is kind of yucky looking. And this needs to go all the way down because it's kind of tall to start with. Got this cool little tool. It's like a little shovel that came with my indoor gardening kit. And I'm going to go ahead and top it off because it needs support. If they have a natural curve in them, you can work with that to make it more artistic. Now we will be top dressing this with some decorative rock. That's what I don't like to do, is get the leaves dirty. <laughs> but I did. That's what this little scooper is for, to keep the leaves from getting dirty. These succulents really are forgiving, and if you forget to feed your plants, they'll forgive you. But I am going to give it a little bit, just because they haven't had any nutrition in a long time. I have another tool in my cute little gardening kit. I love this thing. It's got all these wonderful little tools. It's for indoor gardening and it is an air bulb. That I think you should do this after you water only because I'm blowing the dirt everywhere. It's also got this cute little watering. You squeeze it. I'm just going to wash the leaves a little bit. This is really more for those little tiny two by two inch 
pots, you see, with one little succulent. The last thing I want to do is add my decorative rock. And I searched for something that I thought I would like. This is what I came up with. It's called Exotic Pebbles and Glass. I got this on sale. And I thought, you know what? First I bought black and then I thought, no, I think this would be nicer. Because it picks up the color of the green and it's got a little bit of gray and green and white and I just thought this would be great. And I'm going to use my little scooper again. I want to try to keep this neat if you can. Put about a half an inch on top of the soil. glass and rock, decorative rock that just sets off succulents and makes it so pretty. Now you just want to always try to water these gently so you don't displace the rocks. And look what else I have here that's another cute little tool. And that is to trim off. It's broken. Considering they really suffered there for a while, they look pretty good. Okay, here are our beautiful plants. Some of these leaves got wet, and once they're dry, we can get a better idea if they're dirty or need to be cleaned. And I also ordered some. House Plant Sticky Stakes attracts and traps insects hiding in house plants. So, I am going to read the instructions. How to use. Mount the sticks at desired length. Peel off the release paper from the trap. Place desired number of traps on the clips on the sticks. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so we have a stick, let's see, oh I see, so we have a stick for each, each plant, I guess. You peel off the paper, the yellow is the sticky, obviously. The sticky ends about, it looks like about an eighth of an inch, but you still do get it stuck to your finger. Just pointing that out. Fold it like this. I could probably just do one for all five plants, but just to be safe. You know, I probably only need a couple. The other one? I forget. Okay, we are done. Let's just go put them in the window. This is the windowsill that killed off two of my plants that were given to me on Mother's Day, along with these pretty little drawings. And I'm moving this to my kitchen. Succulents can take the heat. I hope I've convinced you by now that indoor gardening is possible and fun, and it lifts the spirits. I can testify to that. So stay tuned for more adventures in indoor gardening right here on this channel. Welcome to part two of Indoor Garden. Gardening. Gardening. And this is the end of May.
recycled plastic cups. Actually, these are made from plants. These are made from plants. <laughs> One thing you want to keep in mind when you're planting any kind of seed tray is into these five pots. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.